Imagine a fighter jet that can streak from New York to Los Angeles in under 10 minutes. A machine that reacts faster than any human, processes more data than the world's best supercomputer, and becomes invisible not just to radar, but to every sensor known to man. It sounds like science fiction, but it's not. Engineers in the U.S., China, and Russia are already working on prototypes. And what they're building will make today's most advanced fighters, the F-35, the F-22, even the brand new F-47, look like antiques. Welcome to Newsy Nation. Today, we're diving into the mind-bending world of 7th generation fighter jets, the war machines that could redefine not just air combat, but the balance of global power itself. While most headlines are still focused on the F-35's cost overruns or the U.S. Air Force's recent contract award to Boeing for the 6th generation F-47, something far bigger is happening behind the scenes. Military planners know that by the time the F-47 reaches full service, it may already be outdated. Why? Because the next evolutionary leap, the 7th generation fighter, is being quietly shaped in laboratories and classified hangars right now. And the capabilities being discussed are so radical that they don't just change how wars are fought, they change what war itself even means. So, what exactly makes a 7th generation fighter different? To put it in perspective, think about the leap from World War II's prop driven fighters to today's stealth jets. That gap was enormous. Now, imagine an even bigger jump where aircraft aren't just fast or stealthy, but intelligent, space capable and armed with weapons we usually only see in sci-fi movies. Let's start with speed. Current champions like the F-22 Raptor top out at around Mach 2.2. That's impressive, but 7th generation designs aim for sustained hypersonic flight. Mach 5 and beyond, over 3,800 miles per hour. At those speeds, a jet could cross the continental U.S. in under an hour or circle the globe in just a few. But pushing an aircraft that fast generates searing heat, hot enough to melt steel. That means new materials are essential. We're talking med materials and advanced ceramics engineered at the molecular level. Some can withstand thousands of degrees. Others can flex and adapt under stress. And some may even repair themselves when damaged. China's experimental White Emperor program is rumored to be testing such technologies while Russia's peak EDP project hints at ambitions that go beyond Earth's atmosphere. Because here's the thing. Seventh-generation fighters aren't being designed just for air combat. They're being imagined as dual-domain aircraft, capable of operating in both the atmosphere and space. That means missions no current fighter could dream of. Deploying tactical satellites on demand, conducting reconnaissance from the edge of space, or intercepting enemy spacecraft. In effect, they become the ultimate high ground platforms, striking anywhere on Earth within minutes. But the implications go far beyond budgets. If one nation develops seven generation fighters first, the balance of power could shift overnight, sparking arms races or even preemptive conflict. And then there's the ethical question Should machines be trusted to make life and death decisions at speeds no human can match? The uncomfortable truth is that future wars may be fought too fast for human oversight, forcing us to rethink not just weapons policy, but the very laws of war. Yet it's not all dark. Breakthroughs in propulsion could lead to cleaner fuels like hydrogen. Advanced manufacturing might slash waste and spark civilian technologies, just as GPS and the Internet once did. These jets aren't only weapons. They're symbols of humanity pushing the limits of physics and engineering, building machines that could reshape how nations compete, and maybe even how they cooperate. The race for seventh generation supremacy has already begun. While today's F 35s and F 47s dominate headlines, the real future of air power is being designed right now in classified labs. The only questions are who will get there first, and what kind of world will it create? 